Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Thursday edition of JC3D. It's uh, January, I'm sorry, June 2nd, about 9 a.m., 8.57 a.m. to be exact. So today I'm going to model for you a olive oil bottle cap. This was a special request from a viewer named Sue Neal. Well, thank you very much. Um, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Also, I post all these 3D models up on TurboSquid, typically for about 20 bucks. It's TurboSquid runs sales all the time, so sometimes you can get it for 13 or 12 bucks or whatever. But jumping right in, so I've got this guide lined up. If you click the description below me, um, you can go to my Google Drive and you can download this very scene in Cinema 4D R26. And it's got a couple of guides. It's got these other guides in there. A couple of different angles of it. <clears throat> and then it has this guide here loaded into the computer. So, jumping right in. First thing I like to do is turn these things off. The work plane and the world axis. That stuff can be helpful because you can actually click to these grid points when you're making things. But I never really use it too much. So now I'm just going through looking for simple plutonic shapes right away. So first one I'm just kind of honing in on is this one right here. So that's going to be a tube like this. Boom. So let's see here. What kind of olive oil is it, you're wondering? California. Boom. You know, I'm not quite sure if this if this qualifies as fried food. Like, if you dump this on a pan and you cook that with chicken, is that fried food? Or is fried food deep fried, like in a deep fryer? I like to think it's deep fried because I'm not allowed to eat fried food because of cholesterol problems. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. But I'm going to ask the doctor about that one or Google it. Going up here like so. Now, I've got this guy right here. He's in the default. You can see the guide's a little bit off. So I can adjust that by going up to View, Configure, and then down over here, the Attribute Manager, click on the Back tab, so there's several tabs here, click on the Back tab, down here, this is where it's loaded in from your computer, and you got a couple of different settings here, and you can adjust the image. So if I want to tab it over, I can notch it over like this, just like that, kind of get it lined up a little bit better. Alrighty, it's also slightly rotated, so if you go like this, Go like one. So I'm just looking at the top there, right here, and I'm looking at the corner down here. And yeah, something like that looks a little bit better. Okay, so you got this. Now this is going to go up a little bit higher. If I go into this mode right here, I'm just going to pull that up like that. I'm going to cut it off right there. So you can do that with a cube. Just pull that up here, rotate it. Like that. Now is that a 45? I'm just checking. Pretty close to a 45, so I'm going to go 45 on that one. Like, say, like this. And if you're in object mode, you get these little handles right here, and you can change the size of things. They're really difficult to see, but they're there. It's this little yellow. My guide here is really blowing it out. Let's see. So we're going like this. Move it down a little bit like that. Now I'm just going to cut the top off there with a Boolean. So we're going to go Boolean. Grab these two like that. And then this kind of depends on how these two are arranged here. The order of who's on top matters. So that really quickly got me to where I want to be. There's also four different settings for different kinds of booleans you can do. Uh, but this is what I wanted right there. So let's see. I'm going to fine tune this little thing here. And just want to check and see. Is maybe it doesn't want to be the wall thickness so big. So you change that with this little handle down here make it thinner. I can also give it a little bit more subdivision. If I go here, type in like 32, then that gets a little bit smoother. But this this right here is not the best for a render because it doesn't have a bevel right there. So what you could do is you could take all this. I could try to put a bevel on this right here like this. So if I go bevel down here and I take these two things and I group them, you can attempt to put a bevel on this. Let's see, it's not really working right here where the boolean's cutting it. So, a different way to do the same thing is I'll just take this guy here. 
Now in this situation, I might not want to have it so heavily subdivided because I'm going to current state it to an object. So I'm going to bring this back down. And then let's see what happens if I current state this to an object. Right here, click this little button right there. Now it's no longer um, thinking about it like this Boolean. But the top piece here is separate from this piece. So you take these two, click them together and say connect and delete. And then you want to run an optimization on it. So I'm just going to point mode, select all these points like this, then go to mesh, remove, optimize down here. Now these points are on top of each other. So you can have a zero tolerance because they're really in the same exact spot. That's like how far apart is a point and you meld it weld it together. So if you turn the tolerance up, these two points right here will weld together and you can weld all these points together if you crank it up too much. But leaving it zero will work for what I want to do. So I go like this. Now this is connected. So if I grab this point here and move it up like that, it's now one point. Whereas previously that would have been two points on top of each other, which is bad for when you try to subdivide it like that. Now I might be able to just put a bevel on here. That's what I was thinking. And it's going to have to turn that down. Okay, the bevels is not really looking too good for me like for that. So let's go back to this other approach where I'm going to do the subdivision like that. And then I'll just, instead of getting this here kind of coming thin, I'll just add a couple of clicks here with this tool. It's called the Loop Path Cut Tool. And then if I add one here, and if I add one in here, I'm putting more points together so you get an edge. That's kind of what's going on with that. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Down here, maybe I want to do the same thing. Some artist, Robert Irv Irving, Irvine, he did the gardens over there in the Getty Museum. I read some book about him my sister gave me, but he would always talk about doing the artwork that nobody sees, but doing it really as good as you do the the part that people see. So like in this story, he's talking about painting the inside of a glove box in, a, in an old truck. And he's got like, I don't know if it was like 16 layers of red paint or something all in the thing. And then he has some friend who goes down with a screwdriver and tries to open the thing up and completely destroys like 20 layers of paint or something like that. And he, he's just really upset about it. But anyway, back to this. So we'll go here and we're going to put this down. Now I need to get this little shape right here so I can grab that with my spline tool. And all I gotta do is just go to about here, something right about there, and follow along like this. Boom, then you see this tight angle? You gotta put three points. So one, two, three. And then start working the way down here. That might give it this little edge right here. Hopefully. Let's see. I'm actually going to pull that down a little bit more. Like to here. Three. And then I'll put three here too to get that edge. Alright. Now. One, two, three. Let's do this. Now, I usually we'll go through here and just take these guys and just clean them up a little bit. So like, I want that to be straight, but when I'm drawing it, I can never draw it straight. So I just never worry about it and I fix it after. Like that, like that, like that. Boom. Okay, so then I'll turn on uh, beast blind, like so. Do, 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 do. This one here might want to be flat too. So, okay, so now this is the origin right here. I've been working off the middle. So when I grab this by default, it's in the right spot. And it's the lathe. I'm just dropping it like that. It's going to revolve it around. Just like that. Connect on. I just going to turn off this work plane and stuff. Okay. Birds are robots. 
<laughs> YouTube that. There's a great funny guy out there who made a funny video about it, and he, he would go have real get-togethers. <laughs> Everybody would show up, but they're all in on the joke. All right, let's uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. You can go through and fuse these two together. It would be probably nice. But we'll see if we'll see if I have enough time for that. This would also kind of work. We'll go down here. Now we've got this guy on the side. This is just a uh, another tube. I'll go like this. Rotate it. I'm gonna go and move it down a little, like so. Rotate it like this. Boom. All right, so we're going up here like that. I'm just going to make this. Huh, I thought they fixed that. See how you can hold this and you can move this one around? This one you can't. You've got to hold control. Whoops. Got to hold uh, command. Yeah, no. Got to hold shift, maybe. Yeah, see, so you have to hold shift to that. I don't know why they do that. But um, anyway, go down here like that. Now, see the outer rings lined up, but the inner rings not. That's because the camera angle is always slightly cocked. You never really get it like perfect unless you're in a CAD 3D program like this one. And the, the lens is distorted, so everything gets rounded. Um, but that's the, I guess that's the way that we're used to seeing the world because our eyeballs are round. So the camera lenses are round too, I guess. It's to distort reality in the photo like we're used to distorting it. All right, here we go. So now this guy here is just a cylinder. So I grab a cylinder. I know I want it to be in the same spot as this one, so I can just zero it out. As long as I'm in object mode up there. You, want, you don't want to be in point mode or face mode or line mode to do that trick. So then in here, I'm just making it about the size that I think it is. Something like that. Let's move it out here. Boom. Now both of these need a bevel and some more subdivision. So I'm just going to go 32, 32, and then put a fillet on there. Cap fillet. Now this one to me looks like it's a little bit bigger. The fillet anyway, it's a little bit kind of like smoother. Like that. And this one actually looks like it's got a pretty good bevel on it too, so let's crank that up. Alright, and so now this is going to be on both sides, so if I take this here, grab a null, where's a null right up here, then I'm going to go and add a symmetry. You put the null underneath the symmetry, so you can put multiple objects in there. Um, and we'll put this over on this side of that. Now, I want it to go around this way, not this way. So you do that right here. There's three different settings. Just like that. Alrighty. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is pop in a slightly different guide here. You can drag and drop from your computer. So you can just, uh, I just gotta find the one I want. This one. Drag and drop like that. And then I'll use this little um, view configure back tab here just to kind of adjust it. So I made this one straighter over here. Like that. And bring this down to like somewhere in there. And let's build this. Okay, so this is a cylinder. Let's make it out of a tube. So bring this down here. Now you gotta either pick the side over here or the center. It's kind of difficult. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna grab the height from this one. Then I'm gonna grab the placement from the sides. I think the sides tell you more an, an honest truth of like the profile. But whatever. I mean, I guess it's just the way it is. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if the inner part's the right size real quick. This probably wants to be somewhere around there. Okay, and now I'll put a fillet on there. Crank up the subdivision a little bit. And 
Now we've got this guy. Boom. All right, now I'll have to crank through with this. It's just a couple more tubes. I'll take the same tube like that. Um, want to be in object mode here. It's sometimes difficult to manipulate it if you've got the fillet on. So I sometimes turn that off until I get the basic size together, the whole thing. And then just pop it on. Like that. Boom. Um, you can, if you want to contact me, get me on a Zoom with you doing some 3D lessons. My rate's 67.50 per hour. So I've got people who take a weekly lesson. Um, I've got a guy right here in town who he's learning how to run Cinema 4D. They've got a business where they have the ability to make animations to help sell the product right within the company. And so they've, they've brought Cinema 4D in. They're learning how to use it um, to kind of marry to, you know, Premiere and After Effects and all the other productions they've got going on. So Cinema 4D can be great for a business. It can be great for just a one single person like me um, to make their own business. So yeah, if you if you want some help learning the program, you can reach out to me directly, and um, I can schedule you in. So there we go. I got that to that. Going like this. Copy and pasting it um, to get that one underneath it. So that's a slightly thinner one. Whoops. It's a little bit bigger, and then it goes up here, like right to there. You can see right here it needs to be a little bit bigger. Put a couple of fillets on both of these. You can select them both and do it at the same time. Okay, now you got this right here. One, two, three, and they're one, two, three, four. They're getting smaller as they go. So I'll take this guy right here, make the parent out of it. I'm gonna copy that, paste it. I'm gonna bring it back to the origin like this. I'm gonna grab a cloner. Oh shoot! You know what? Let me put this into my clipboard and undo that because I do need that one okay so then this one up here um, I'll take and make the big one but first I'm gonna put a cloner on it cloner like that it's gonna be a linear cloner and it's gonna be negative one ish or something around there so let me bring it down to this okay so now as this goes down there's gonna be four of them goes down to here See, this moves around like this, but you can kind of get it really quick. Like, okay, it's right there. And then just remove this one. And then it's just going perfectly straight down. All right? Put this in. It's going to add a diagonal to it. But, you know, when you're free moving it like this, it's going to add a little bit to it. So you just kind of place it and then zero this out. Like that. Now, the scale. Let's see. Want it to keep scaling, so I think we've got the scale here is 100. Let's see if I go 50, 50. What is that doing? It's getting it way small. So what if I do 80, 80? Alrighty, we're gonna go up a little bit more. 90, 90, 90. 90, 90, 90 seems to be pretty good. Maybe. Maybe we want it to be 95. 95, 95, 95. Okay. Now, yeah, I can make these a little bit more circular in the side there by just increasing this like that. Maybe even a couple more subdivisions. Five's a lot, but that's probably really nice right there. Do, 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 do. Okay. I think that looks about right. Um, if anything, maybe what I want to do is. trying to cover that stuff up a little bit all right that looks pretty good now let me look around this thing so we've got this cap piece here that goes on it looks like also that this piece here might run all the way through so I can take that out of there put it on the zero whoops on the zero this way and then crank out the size of that like that maybe make that bevel a little bit smaller like that that's probably more of what's going on then, okay, now I've actually got another one of these. I think that um, 
might be the right size. Yeah, see how that one has it on the, it's just on. I think I like that. So let me move this around. Do, 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 do. Just kind of line that up right there. Okay. Now mine's on the other side, but I'm just gonna flip it when I'm done with it. So I'm gonna grab everything and hide it like this. Save my scene, and now I'm gonna make this piece right here. So the top piece is like um, a cylinder, a cylinder like this. I don't want so many height subdivisions right there. I'm gonna take those down, bring that up to there, and rotate it. I think 45. this a little bit um, not so thick like that Looks like my 45 is a little bit off for the guide so I'll just follow the guide here all right so I've got this current state to an object now I'm going to select this bottom row of, I want the face layer to be in face mode sorry go down here boom boom like that I'm gonna hit the hockey D. It's gonna move it out like this. And then I'm gonna hit the scale right here. Make it bigger. Like that. I'm gonna hit hockey D again. Boom. Now if you look at that underneath the subdivision, it's starting to see that shape come in there like that. Now this shape here, I'm gonna to try to get with the polygon pen. So we're gonna go into polygon pen mode, nothing selected, turn it on. And I'm gonna imagine what this looks like. Got the guy across the street going, you hear him? There's three of us going now. <laughs> you hear him over there? It's in stereo. And he's answering over there across the street. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna put a little subdivision right there. Mesh, line, line cut will do it. You just go like this. And then I'm gonna move those points right here so that they're kind of a little bit more where I want them to be, like that. There's some kind of a hole right here too, where this thing, there must be some mechanical aspect to it where it's sliding or something. I'm not quite exactly sure what the deal with that is. But, let's take a look at this. Boom, there's this basic shape coming. Put it underneath the smoother and you get more of an idea what it's gonna look like. And then what we want to do is see if I can see it from this angle. Um, turn this back on, perhaps. Select everything here, move it over. So it's like right there. And then back to the polygon pen. So I'm gonna turn this off, hide this stuff again. And back to the polygon pen, and then we're gonna activate this guy. Now I'm gonna grab a point right here off of this window, but then I'm gonna hover over to this window here and put it about over here. In this case, the grid's doing me a favor because it's kind of telling me where to put it. So I'll go right here. All right, and then I know that uh, 
down here is where I want to be, so I'll go right about there. And then I can complete it right here. And just like that. Now you can go and clean it up a little. See, so you've got the height and the width. So this this one, well, this one right here, first off, you can take X, zero that out like that. Then you take these and the Ys, like this, boom, zero those out, like that. These ones are probably flat, yeah. And this one here, not so. So take like that. Okay, so now we've got everything perfectly. Um, now what we're gonna wanna do is build up to here. So I'm back into polygon mode. I'm gonna go here, 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 here. That to that to that, and I think that should do it. Straighten those out. Boom. Boom, 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 See now, that's not exactly the same as that, so it's kind of annoying. But I can go up here, I can add um, in the middle. Then I can say, well, what did you really want? Uh, move it this way or that way? And I think I can also increase the subdivision right somewhere. Maybe not, maybe I need to use the um, bridge tool for that. But anyway, let's go here. Then I'll hold shift here and shift here. So then I've got them equally placed. I'll go like this and select this stuff here and push it out halfway. Then select this in the middle, push it out to here. And then so be mindful of this and lift this up. Or maybe bring it down. Alrighty. Turn this on so we get it smoothed. Okay. It's looking pretty good. So I'm just staring that up in my head. Uh, let's see. Let's mirror this stuff over here. So check this out. Delete this half. Boom. Turn off that for now. Put in this uh, symmetry right here. And then go like that. Fix the plane. I don't want that one. And then you've got to make sure that this is on the zero. So you go zero, tab back up to here, and hit zero. Boom. I don't know. That way it all welds together. There's this little weld setting right there. So that's the distance between whoop, where it becomes one point. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Mm. All right. Give this a little thickness. Right here, we can just go to cloth. Whoops, I don't know if I got this bit. Cloth. Boom. And now drop it on there like that. Over here to one. A little bit too much of point one. Point one seems pretty cool. Now you get a really straight edge right here, which is never really the best in a render. So you can try to rearrange this, you know, maybe you put that on there and then smooth it after. You see, then you get a smoother, it's a little bit too smooth. But what we can do, that's better than the straight edge. There's nothing in the real world has a straight edge like that. I think you learn about that in um, a book about Steve Jobs. Yeah, nothing in the world that you pick up anywhere is going to have a straight edge except for virtual reality. So it's always better to have these bevels on there. So that's why we're doing it. I'm going to go down here, turn this off, and add some subdivision. So let's see. The loop path cut tool. This is a great way to do it. So I'm going like this. And add subdivision there. I'm going like this. Right. Now that's not the best for like down here. Another way I could have done that 
is I could select these polygons right here, like this, and hit I. Then that's adding a subdivision around the whole thing. You can see what that looks like, like that. And then you see how it thickened it up right there. So I can do the same thing over here. Then you're gonna get a little bit of a weird thing in here, but let's see what I let's see what happens. Go here, hit the hockey eye, add some subdivisions. But now you see you don't really want these. So what you end up doing is get rid of this. Then you zero these out. And this is all this is all in the effort just to get some nice bevels. So go here, I'm gonna go the yeah, Z zero. Zero. Whoops. Zero. And then see right here. This would be ideal if this had a piece right here that was connected. So in order to do that, we really just need a point right here and here, right? So you can go to this guy, select this, Wink. and you can say. Um, well, let's see. Here's another way I might be able to do it. If I just, um, well, I'll just go with my original idea here. So I'm going to go with the line tool, line cut, and then I'm going to go visible only and select restrict selection. So then I want to have one right about here. And I want to have one right about here. Oh, now when I go in here and look at my points, I've got points there. So I can then take these polygons, I think, right here and here and here and here. Let me see, I'll try to delete these first. I think I might just delete these. Right. Yeah, okay, so now hopefully my points are still there. Nah, they're not. Okay, well, maybe that's going to be okay. Let's try to clean it up. So I'm gonna go here and here, bridge these two. And then this and this. And then this and this. Now if this works, that'd be crazy. Eh, it didn't take any account of that. Okay, so are my points are? No. So in a situation like this, sometimes what I'll do is um, grab a plane. Oh, you know what? Let's see. I don't want those points hanging up. So I'm gonna grab um, back to this. And here and here, bridge that like this. Then I wanna go down to this guy. I'm just gonna take this little plane right here. Oh, sorry, the little line. Hit that TD. And it'll make one of those, and then I can push it down like that. And then I can bridge those. So I'm going to go back to add bridge. Connect that. Oops. Huh. So let me just select the damn thing. Here to here. Bridge. Oops. Bridge already. And here to here. Okay, woo, there we go. I think I got it. So now if I turn this on, I'm gonna get some thickness that I like. A little bit of a bend there. I don't like so much. Um, let's see. Stefan says you may want to increase the volume. Oh, of my microphone? Or the volume in, of 3D, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'll try to talk a little louder. See here, da, 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 da. <laughs> testing one, two, three. Um, okay, let's see right here. Move this back a little. Yeah, what I'm trying to do is just get this bump out, I guess. So let's move this over here and over here. Down. Okay. Zap it with a little iron. But that looks pretty good to me, I think, for right now. So let me go down here. Now, it had this little 
doohickey right here, which I think is this, like a hole punched out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll put it right here, rotate it. Like that, scale it down. Make it a little bit bigger. Go into object mode, you're going to get those handles, hypothetically. Although I'm not seeing them for some reason. Hmm, that's weird. Let's see, uh, something like this. Go up there, and I get that round just by adding this rounding, and then crank it up. All right, now this I want to have an extrude on it because I'm going to make this the cutter. Go back to here with it. And you just want to make sure it goes through all the stuff you want to cut, so it needs to be a little bit longer. So you make it longer like that. Okay, then you take these two objects and make a boolean. Drag and drop them under it. And then rearrange them. And then you've got the hole there. I think I'll just go with that hole. I mean, it's the same old thing where you've got the edge is too straight, but, you know, it's a kind of a pain in the butt to go through. Um, so that one's hard to see anyway, once I turn everything back on. All right, so like right here, this and this would like to connect together. So we're gonna take a look at them. Got this object here, and it looks like this. So I'm gonna pull it out of there. And then I've got this object here, which is really this one. So I'll take this right here, bring it up here. I'll just hide those guys for now. So I got these two things. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so let me take points of this guy. So the whole thing I'm trying to do right now is just click these together so they're not two separate objects, they're one object. First thing I'm doing is kind of like lifting this up and lining it up. But something looks a little bit odd here. Exactly sure what the deal with that is. So you know what I'm gonna do? Let's just delete this stuff. Now I've got this to work with. Oh, I see. However, I've got the claw thing going. Is what's doing it to me. All right. Hmm, that's just some weird looking stuff right there. There we go. trying to make heads or tails of it. Now, this little guy right here. This little guy right here. I'm going to take that and just delete that. Okay, so now they're both like a piece of paper. Now, I'm going to take this guy, turn off this. Now, I'm going to get rid of half of this guy. Oops. Like this, I'm grabbing all those points right there, just making sure. Do, 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 do. And then we'll get rid of half of that. And then these are destined to be fused together. So I'll take the two, just bring it down here, connect the objects, and delete. Now they're together, but they're not connected really. So then I'll take these two lines right here, boop, boop, and these two, and bridge it. I'm going to see what it looks like with the hypernerve on. Hypernerve is an old term. I meant subdivision surface. So that looks pretty nice. I think I can live with that. Right here is a little whatever, but yeah. I think it looks all right. If that's bothering me a lot, I can kind of go in and look at it and say, well, what the hell is it? So it's these two right here. So you can kind of look at the problem and you know this might get you out of it just doing this right there and you see how that's tucked in right there like that 
So this piece here might come out like that. But you're basically just kind of like going in the average of in between them all. Yeah. Try that out. There we go. Voila. That looks fun. Now back to my Boolean. Drop that in there. And you're going to get those, but you got to have to have it in the right order. Okay. Or you just can't have three objects in there as well. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to go back to this thing. Now remember, I had to like mirror it. So to do that, I can just rotate it actually. Go like this. 180. And then lift it up. And now this thing here. Now I'm just looking at this guy right here. Is it this one? Yeah, and I'm thinking, what would it look like if I scaled this down so I could see a little bit of that? Right there. So you don't see it too well in this one. I'm current the current state this to an object because I want to move that cut and I want to move the object too. So I'm going into the point mode, select all. I don't want them all, but I want like that and just move them down. All right, and then this right here looks like to match with this scene. I just want to move it around a little bit. Let's see. So where's all these points? Go like that. I can see them a little bit better. Now I just want to take these guys right here and just kind of tuck them in. Like that, and just move them up here. Boom. The birds are singing. So let's see, watch this. So if I move this axis, I can change where it rotates from. Right now, I want to rotate it from here. And then I can turn rotation back on. I can do this. Um, oh, no. Turn the null off. I don't do that. Turn the null off here and then rotate like this. There you go. So it rotates from there. I think that looks better. Okay, so I'm about to wrap this up here. I've got the top piece there. Boom, 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 boom. Now that might look a little bit big for the cap. So let's see what I'm going to do about that. Let's just try to scale it down. So we got this, and this. Turn all this stuff off. And go to. Now I want to move this over to the zero. Right there. I'm just trying to kind of hone in on that point right there, I think. Like that. That's the best spot for me to scale it down, I think. Now, let's go to my scale tool here. Do, 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 do. Turn off this axis tool. That's just sort of to place that thing. And then I'm going to globally scale this sucker down. Boom. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it was okay like that. It just wants to come in like here. I'm thinking like this. So, let's see how that feels. 
Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. All right, let's texture this thing. Let's see what it looks like. So let me see, uh, group it all. Now we take a look at what it was down here. So it's all chrome. Now is that the right one though? Let's see here, I think I had a slightly different one. Do, 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 this is what I was going with. So, all chrome. Ooh, look, there's a little straw thing down there we forgot. Hang on. Gotta have that. Configure. Line this sucker up a little bit better. Now to get this straw right here, just take a spline. We'll run it from here to here to here to here, here to here. All right? Make it a B spline. Make it a B spline. Make it a B spline. Take a circle. Is that what I want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, circle. Now we're gonna make a sweep. Grab these two. The circle needs to be on top. And then just make the circle smaller. Scale button. Look for look at the guide there for it. And then what you want to do is make it so it doesn't have the whole cap on. So the caps are right here. Turn those off like that. But then it's paper thin. So what you do is hit cloth surface. Boom. Turn this down and then give it a thickness here like 0.1. You know, negative 0 0.05 like that, and then it's got a thickness. Okay, do 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 do. Looks pretty good. So now back to the textures. So dump all this underneath this guy here. This is the olive oil bottle cap. Olive oil bottle cap. Okay, now boom. I'm just gonna move this over so we can check out the guide underneath. <laughs> now, okay, so I want some plastic. Search for plastic materials, and we will take. I'm going to go for this one right here. That goes on that. That and that. Boom, boom, boom. Now, do, 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 Search for clear. I don't know if that's going to work. White. I'm pretty sure I remember a white kind of see through. Come on. PET. Uh, well, anyway, let me get the chrome. And then we need that. And then we need a metal for that part right there. This little guy. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Looks a little bit weathered. Let's see here. Do, 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 Just look at one that kind of looks like it. This one's sort of. This one's sort of. Nickel looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? We'll go with the. Let's go with this one, I think. Well, geez, I don't know. I'm going to just try a metal part. That'll probably look good. And then for the plastic, I'm just going to have to make something up. So let's see. So this goes on this and this. And the chrome goes on everything else, except for this. I'm gonna make a white one here and put it on that. And then the white one, make it transparent, and you can put it right here, I think it's called PET, it's plastic. Um, put a little bit of a luminous channel maybe, is that gonna work? No, we'll just change how transparent it is like this, and then add a little luminance. Well, let's see how that goes. Alright, 
so now I'll grab this guy, save it, copy. I'm going to go into a scene I've got here that I rendered in the sunglasses from yesterday. Grab that. Get rid of those. Pop this in. I'm going to make an instance here. Call it a render instance. Like that. We'll get a little different angle on the piece, copy and paste it. Another angle here, what do we want? Okay, let's check them out. That render button Second. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna move this scene right here. Save project. Go into here. Audible. I'll we'll call it number two. And then you have to have this file right here in the folder. So I'm gonna copy this. Put that into the folder I'm working on. This is the HDR image. And it's looking for it within there. See how it popped right up like that a little different? Okay, so here we go. Thank you very much for watching the show. I think we were like at 887 subscribers last time I checked. 888 today. All right. The magic 8 number. Celebrate good times. 888. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. Check it out. That is an olive oil bottle top. If anybody out, out there has an idea, you know, if you're Joe Rogan and you want to make a custom one of these and sell it and make millions of dollars and it says Joe Rogan right there, um, contact me in my email. I can help you make a 3D print that you can show to all the engineers. They'll have to redo it in a CAD program, but with an artist like me, you could create something that's not necessarily functional, but looks kind of cool, looks different. And then put your name on it. Joe Rogan. <laughs> just kidding. Every YouTuber is going to call out uh, PewDiePie and Joe Rogan just because they're, you know, they've got the numbers. So, and everybody else is trying to get the numbers. Hey, a spider web. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. And um, if you have an idea, let me know in the comments. This was um, Sue Neal in some country. I got to tell you, a lot of my fans, whatever you call them, subscribers are outside of the United States. Um, the United States has a killer economy, so a lot of this 3D action is happening here too. Um, yeah, so anybody out there, if you're looking for some help, contact me if you want me to work on a project like this for you. Um, I'd be, I'd be uh, happy to. So thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.